Hey folks, this is Matt once again. Um, of course, as you see, it's a review of Rob Zombie's Halloween, but this is actually, I have done the review already, which is why in a minute or two, maybe three, it'll change and I'll be like in a different position and maybe looking a little bit different, maybe not, but only because when I did that review, there were a few things I wanted that talk, mentioned I forgot. So, and when you see a quick change, it goes back to the original review. But some things I forgot to mention. Number one, that I understand that people will say, well, you complain about Rob Zombie's Halloween films, but A, they were already bad because of Halloween 5 and 6 and Resurrection. You have Buster Rhymes doing Kung Fu. He couldn't do much worse. Well, for me personally, Rob Zombie's Halloween films are not interesting at all to me. They're not appealing to learn everything about Michael Myers, about why he did it, the white trash. Just not appealing to me. And I know I look a little bit white trash myself, but that's the thing. I don't want to see it in a Halloween movie. Yes, it is different. I understand that too. But just because it's different doesn't mean it's good. Halloween 3. I love Halloween 3. But, you know, that was definitely different. And a lot of people hated that film. <laughs> so. But, one thing I want to point out is that if you're a fan of Rob Zombie's Halloween films, that's cool. No harm, no foul on that. Nothing wrong with that. I'm just not. Um, I know uh, before they even announced her name, they were thinking of Halloween 9. I know there's this director, Dante Tomaselli. Um, if you check out some of this guy's flits, like uh, he did one called Horror, which the story d didn't make sense to me in that film Horror, but visual-wise, it was pretty appealing. So Dante Tomaselli seemed like a, a very visual director, which I think maybe he could give. I think the thing I didn't mention, Rob Zombie's Halloween films, yes, they're trying to be completely different from Halloween, even though not really because they have it's a, a lot of the same shit in it as well, especially the second half. And then when you try to be very different, you get H2, which fell flat on its face, in my opinion. But, you know, I would have been interested to see a sequel. I don't know, I'm more a fan of a sequels than a remake, because a remake is, okay, let's start over, and grant, I'm one that there's some remakes I enjoy, but doesn't mean every remake I enjoy. But I know this one has a lot of fans. This one I wanted to point out there. If you like this film, it's cool. The other thing I wanted to point out is that there's this guy on YouTube. I think it's called Horror is Dead. He made a four-part on uh, Rob Zombie's Halloween. And I have one of them saved in my favorites, part three. And if you watch part three and four, it's very funny in the fact that the guy, he edited very well, like, very well. Makes me wish I could do that. Where Rob Zombie, before he made Halloween, A, he kept talking to press about how he hates remakes. And the guy found actual quotes where he talked in an interview saying, you know, if you remake something, I think it's pretty stupid. And if you remake something, it's only about the money. Why remake something when the original is perfect? Actual quotes that he said in interviews. And the guy even found them. And then he does this. And then the guy, there's actual interviews, on-camera interviews, where he talks about complaints he has on the first Halloween film. Now, I understand. There are people who are not fans of everything. I complain about The Exorcist and the original Night of the Living Dead. People who are my subscribers, they already know that. So everybody has a fan. and But my point is, I would not try to remake The Exorcist or Night of the Living Dead. Even if I promise I wouldn't try to remake it. Because 90% of people think it's a classic. Leave it the fuck alone. I wouldn't want to be an asshole. He even says in an interview, why don't you try to remake shitty films? I agree. But then what does he do? He flip-flops 
on camera and complains about how, well, you know, he must have the cleanest jumpsuit. How come it's not dirty, but he found it? Um, he went to the hardware store and he found that mask. How did he find that exact mask? Could he have found maybe an Elmo mask or a Jimmy Carter mask? He actually says, like, Jimmy Carter mask. You know, and he did it in broad daylight. And he complains about Donald Pleasant's Dr. Loomis saying, well, sometimes it seems like he just chops in and out to say something cryptic or, uh, you know, sometimes it seems like he's crazy. He's crazy and drunk. Really? I never noticed that. But let's turn him into an asshole like in H2. But he says on camera his com like, little complaints he has of the original film. I'm like, why are you remaking it? You really think you could do better? And then there are actual interviews where he talks about on camera how he is not going to explain why Michael Myers is evil. He don't believe me? Go to my favorites. His title is How Rob Zombie Ruined Halloween. Again, I know that's up for debate. Some people would say Halloween 5 and 6 and stuff already did that. But watch that. It's part 3 of 4. Watch on-camera interview where he actually contradicts himself. Where he says on camera one, like one or two times says, I'm not going to explain it. Um, he was born that way. It doesn't matter if you're in a rich family or poor family. You're a fucking psycho. Uh, he's not going to explain. Then another cam, another on camera interview where he says, "Well, I wanted to go into you know the explanation and of how he doesn't even know what the fuck he's doing. And this is on camera." And just like when you go to part four of of that guy's thing, he talks about how. Actual interviews where he's like, I'm not going to do a Halloween 2. And even a guy on the radio is saying, and this is like, it's not fate because you actually see Rob Zombie talking to a person saying it. So no matter what, you'll never do, no, I will never do it. It has a beginning, a middle, an end. And I'm like, you watch that. I mean, this guy is getting paid in bullshit. Like, I understand people, they change their opinions, they change their minds. Um, but you gotta kinda, if I did that, if I did that, or when I do that, people own up on me on it. Say, wait a minute, I thought you liked this. And then I'm like, okay, well, I'm gonna explain why. And he should fucking explain himself. Like, you're not gonna explain Michael Myers, um, uh, I don't think there's no need to. Then on another on-camera interview, you say, well, I'm going to explain. I'm like, it's just total 180. Like, you're contradicting yourself. You don't even know what you're doing. And this is a guy doing the remake of Halloween, which isn't needed and wanted. So I wanted to point that out, too. That I thought it was very funny. But, uh, yeah. Either way, I've gone eight minutes already. Uh, I'll probably cut around here to my original, not original from back in the day, but my review of Rob Zombie's Halloween. Thanks for watching, and hope you enjoy the review rant later. Hey folks, this is Matt once again with another review of another Halloween film. So of course I had to revisit this fucking movie again. Which I remember when I had my old account, I did like a little movie. This one left this fucking movie on my fucking doorstep. And that's the remake of Halloween. Which I rented. And I would throw this a fucking frisbee across the room. I know some friends of mine, like Efri and such, like the theatrical cut. I understand this. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't. I hate this fucking movie. I think. I hate the fact they call this Halloween. They should call it shit. Turd. That's what it should be called. Turd. Now, Rob Zombie, this guy who 
I like his music. I'm a fan of his music. I love his songs. And I like, I love his songs. A lot of his music. I'm not a fan of him as a director. House of a Thousand Corpses, I think it's okay. Devil's Rejects, it's so-so. I think, honestly, Devil's Rejects is a little bit overrated, in my opinion. In my opinion, it's a little bit overrated. But, you know, there are films I could watch. This, though, is the white trash version of Halloween. That's what it is. I know, because I see white trash when I look out my fucking window. I see white trash when I look in the fucking mirror. See all the times I'm fucking swearing? That's what Rob Zombie does in his fucking movies. He just wants to put as many fucks and shits in his fucking movies as possible. Now people are like, okay, you don't rant. Why? Number one, remake of Halloween was not needed, was not wanted. And this comes from a guy who is bitching about remakes, who is mad and angry about the Texas Chainsaw Master remake, saying, if they did it right the first time, why would you want to do it again? Makes no sense. I agree. Yet... Sometimes they work. I enjoyed Dawn the Dead remake. Hills of Eyes remake, I love. Granted, I don't like the original Hills of Eyes. Maybe that's why too, but I think that was done the right way. Here, though, the original was a classic. The original did not need to be messed with. There was nothing wrong with the original. And so, okay, he's going to do his own film. And whether you see the director's cut or the actual cut, his version... Yeah, some of it's different. And it's all crappy. Number one, the whole deal of making sort of like a prequel. Horrible, horrible, horrible idea. So we're going to take all the stuff that made Michael Myers interesting. As in his mystique. His mystique, his mystery, his lack of motivation. And take this guy here. I don't hold this because I like this film. His lack of motivation, or and right, he had a motivation here, but it was simple. It was to the point, and you still had a mystery. Michael Myers was still the fucking shape. He was still the shape. You know, you still have a lot of mystery and intrigue and why Michael Myers did this. And Okay, it's his sister, but why did he kill them when he was a boy? And the What Rob Zombie doesn't understand is that, yeah, you're trying to be different, so you want to look into, quote, the backstory of Michael Myers. Guess what? They tried to do that with this. Did this work out? No. It didn't work out right. So now you don't do a bad story again? Here's a clue. No one cares about the fucking backstory of Michael Myers. No one cared about the fucking backstory of why did Michael become this? No one gave a shit. No one cared. It was not interesting. Whatever the fuck you came up with would not be interesting. No one cares about the backstory of Michael Myers. No one cares. You don't. Does anyone really give a fuck about why Michael Myers became a killer? No. So the whole beginning of the film is fucking pointless and ruins Michael Myers' mystique. Ruins his... He is no longer the shape. He is no longer... The mysterious figure, the shape, this force that to be reckoned with. Now he's just a typical, generic, sea level serial killer. With your typical, cliche ridden by the numbers of every fucking pinpoint to why did he become a killer? Oh, he has a bad environment. So, what? 
He has this white trash family. Of course, his mom's got to be played by Sherry Moon Zombie, Rob Zombie's woman. That he's got to put in every one of his fucking movies. He has a asshole stepdad played by William Forsythe. He has a slutty sister who, when Michael Myers comes in, tells about how his pet died. Because that's another thing. He kills animals. Wow, how original. Like, they haven't done that in 50 other fucking Lionsgate serial killer flicks. <laughs> Check out to your video store. Check out a film from Lionsgate. I'm sure you'll find it. There's like 50 of them. Or there's like three a week. Oh, and then the slutty sister going, Oh, El, like the name of the pet ride was Elvis. Oh, Elvis, Elvis, like, moaning, groaning like a bitch in heat. And yeah, I cuss a lot in the fucking review, but I'm trying to do that as the poke fun at how much fucking cussing they have to put in this. I'm not, oh my god, cussing, I'm offended. It's just, it's not even dialogue anymore. It's like, you flappy ass tits and I'm going to crawl over there and scroll fuck the shit out of you. That's all that fucker does is cry, cry and shit, shit and cry, sit on my pole, bitch. I'm like... This is not dialogue anymore. Unless maybe it's the kids from South Park writing the shit. I'm not talking about Trey Parker and Matt Stone. I'm talking about the actual kids of South Park writing a script. This is what the script would be. I'm like, wow, you really have to push. Oh, see how trashy they are? See how ugly this environment he is? Like, they push it. And the guy teaches about how oh, he wants to be realistic. This is over the top, silly. I don't fuck you in the fuck. I'm gonna go fuck you in your shit and your fuck. Really? And why should I care about any of these people? Even Michael Myers, played by what Dade Fock or Fuck or Folk or Fock or Fayek. Fuck. Whatever the fuck this kid's name is. He gets a lot of good notices. Whatever, man. Yeah, Dade Fock or Fayek or Fook or Fate or Dade Fock. Or my, he, he's the best Fock. Dade Fock. <laughs> he made sense. You just made him like a fucking bitch, girl. Either he's going, I'm not listening. Ah! Wearing a fucking mask, a clown mask. Or he looks like a fucking girl. Looks like fucking Mary Kate or Ashley Olsen. Oh, but then now that you have to have the environment, the cliche, oh, he got picked on at school too. So he just picked on. And the dialogue in here is like, hey, you think she'll let me suck your tits? You think your mom will let me suck your tits? Or maybe I can get a blowjob for a quarter. And maybe I'll suck her tit in her pussy. And then the fuck. That's all it is. Titty, pussy, fuck. And suck titty. And lick the pussy. Pussy tit. Tit, pussy. Blowjob. That's the dialogue in this movie. I'm like, seriously. This is how you're going to be different. A fucking five-year-old. Okay. Let's... let's be fair, 10-year-old to write this fucking script. I can write a script too. Fuck in the fuck and suck. I just can't play music. Thus, I can't be like Rob Zombie and get the credentials of a musician to thus go into filmmaking. And this picked on a school and he... All the fucking cameos Rob Zombie has put in got really distracting. I got put in Bill Mosley. I got put in Danny Trejo. I got put in the girl from Police Academy. I got put in the girl. You know, I got put in Clint Howard and fucking the asshole German guy from fucking all these other movies. That's in the unrated cut. You know, I got put in our Courtney Gaines and the rape scene in the unrated cut. And that was the first one I saw was the unraid version. The director's cut version. That was the first one I saw. I know my friend Effrey is not a fan of that cut. I'm not a fan of that cut either, but even the theatrical cut. 
Just seeing all these fucking cameos that distract him. You get to a point where you play the game, spot the celebrity. I should not be doing that in a fucking Halloween movie. It's a Halloween movie, not... What's that fucking show called? Not win, lose, or draw. The fucking... The fucking thing where Whoopi Goldberg hosted all that fucking time. And even Elf was on one of them and shit. It's not one of those fucking things where you... Tic-tac-toe, you know, it's just a square. Fucking shit. I gotta look that shit up because I fucking forgot. But, so, of course, you have Loomis coming in. This is supposed to take place, I guess, in the 70s because Loomis looks really ridiculous, played by Mountain McDowell. And it's just fucking horrible, what the hell. Really is horrible how he looks. This is ridiculous and try to, I, I don't know how to put it, just acts, tries to act like he fucking in the 70s. And they show him pictures of all these dead animals. He's, he's like, oh, she, you know, he couldn't have done this. He couldn't have done this, right? I think like Celebrity Square or something like that. Anyway, oh, fuck it. It's celebrities, whatever the fuck. I fucked up it anyway. But yeah, Hollywood Squares, that's what it is. It ain't fucking Hollywood Squares. It's a Halloween movie. That tell me about the celebrity. And there's no reason to care when Michael Myers, first off, okay, he kills the kid. I don't need to see the Wonder Years version of Michael Myers. I don't need to see Michael Myers how he was a fucking kid. Oh, it's different. There's a lot of movies that are different. Alright? This movie was different. With the man in black and the mute and... Doesn't mean it's fucking good. Which I'll get to. This movie was really different. This movie sucked. Went through right in the garbage. I didn't even mean to. Just because it's different. Yes, it did something different. Doesn't mean it's good. What do I think should happen? A. Not make the fucking movie. Or B. I'll get to. I'll get to that in a second. But. I don't need to see the Wonder Years version of fucking Michael Myers. I don't need to see him as a kid. It wasn't interesting. It's typical, cliche, he killed animals, he got picked on at school, he has a shitty family. And then when he does kill them, it's fucking silly. Because first off, his mom, Sherry Moon, is out stripping. You have the fucking song playing Love Hurts. I should not hear Love Hurts in a fucking Halloween movie. Love Hurts should not be in a fucking Halloween movie. Love hurts. Ba da ba. Why the fuck is this in a Halloween movie? Why is my dick itching? Why is my ball slagging down my ankles? My ass hurts. Why? Cause love hurts. No, more like my dick hurts. I just want to pull out and stroke it. I just rather do that for fucking two hours and watch the fucking movie. One of the worst fucking remakes. Just Rob Zombie, yes, you're doing something different, but you completely missed the fucking point of Halloween. <clears throat> Michael Myers is not fucking Jason Voorhees. Which I'll get to when I talk about Halloween 2. His version. Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. Sorry. I shouldn't. This is Halloween 2. Rob Zombie's H2. <clears throat> it's not your fucking love hurts in a fucking Halloween movie. Fucking. See, I'm cussing so much more than you stupid ass Rob Zombie. And didn't you have silly shit? Yes, okay. 
I guess someone can be drunk enough to do this, but it still looked fucking silly. When William Forsythe's passed out and little Michael Myers duct tapes his ass. I guess I've never been that way. I'm sorry. I guess I, because I don't drink. So I guess you could be passed out enough to do that? It still looks silly. And then my question is, if he can duct tape the guy, why does he just find some fucking rope if he's going to go that far? If he don't put duct tape... Enough so, you know, for him to be fine. Why doesn't he use rope? He can't find rope? Anybody can find rope. <laughs> but no, duct tape. Slits his throat. And then, another thing that was great about the original, you didn't know much about the sister, so... But he, by this time, in this film, you hate the sister. Because she's a slutty bitch. And that's it. She's a slut and a bitch. No reason for me to like her. So when she gets killed, and of course the laughable thing where, you know, the boyfriend brought the Michael Myers mask, you know, the mask. And so now the little kid has put the mask on him. So I'm seeing this little kid with the Michael Myers mask. And it looks fucking laughable. How is that supposed to be scary? A little kid walking with a Michael Myers mask on, carrying a knife. That is silly. It looked silly. How does that look like silly? It's almost like they filmed a fucking midget version of Halloween. <laughs> Maybe they got one of those little Mexican wrestlers, you know, and put a fucking Halloween mask to... Instead of, you know, Mr. Nacho Libre or whatever the fuck. Luchador. <laughs> but, oh, Michael Myers didn't kill the baby. His little baby sister and brought it out. And then you have a long extended scene of, you know, Melty McDowell as, Lo as Loomis trying to help Michael. And whatever, eat what? No matter what version you see, it still feels fucking long. It's just, talk to me, Michael. Oh, this is what happened with Michael. Talk to me, Michael. This is what happened with Michael. We already fucking know what's happening. It's just a waste of space, waste of space, waste of space. Uh, only for a stupid scene. Literally, this is how dumb this fucking movie is. You get a fucking nurse in there. And for some reason, no explanation, she's a fucking bitch. Listen to this picture. Oh, nice uh, baby. Oh, but you're in there. You're... No way you're related to it. Just acts like a complete bitch. Now, she would have to know this kid killed at least three people. Four people if they found out. But at least three that they know about. So what do they do? She has it so that he has a fucking fork. And this is how she reads her newspaper. He's there. She literally. How was it? How did it look? Like, put it over here. And reads the newspaper over here. But shit, you're not. He's sitting there. She turns all the way over here. And looks so the fucking thing. Reads the little magazine right over here. Who the f- Rob Zombie, you're an asshole. Oh, I'm trying to be realistic. That's why you had such a fucking thorn in your ass about, well, how come Michael Myers drived? How come he did this? I got to explain that. Explain this, Rob Zombie. Explain why you have a fucking nurse who works there being A, a bitch for no reason, B, leaving a fucking fork, a metal fork, metal fork, right there, turn and have to turn in her fucking chair to read a magazine. So of course what does he do? He gets the fork and he stabs the woman. And then Sherry Moon Zombie is crying and she shoots herself. But here's the thing. 
She still has a fucking baby. Yes. She's watching an old movie about her and Michael. What does she do? She shoots herself. But the problem is, for me, she still has a fucking baby. I'm doing this because I'm like, where's the fucking brain cell? What kind of mom would shoot herself when she has a fucking baby right there for her to take care of? Are you serious? What the fuck? And yet horrible dialogues years later. And Loomis. Malcolm McDowell is a shitty Loomis. I wish that God... Oh my God. He ruins the Loomis name. Because whenever people don't talk about Loomis now, they don't think of Malcolm McDowell. And he did such a half-ass, shitty-ass, butt-hurting performance. It was fucking... It's like the guy was trying to do some biz, some Shakespeare business for a fucking play. He was not natural. He was forcing every fucking line of dialogue. He was not cool or interesting. Or he was just fake with his deliveries. He was just... Like, literally... It's like, if they had an American Idol version of acting, he would be the fucking... He'd be that fucking Asian guy. What the fuck his name is? But got all that fucking butthurt comments who couldn't seem for shit. William Hun. He'd be the fucking William Hun of fucking acting. I'm not even kidding. Much McDowell sucked in this movie. He was no Loomis. Yes, he wasn't much of an asshole as he is in the second film, which I'll get to, but he's still fucking horrible in this film. He's horrible. And he just thought, I was like, oh, I knew you 15 years. That's nearly twice as long as my first marriage. Who gives a fuck? And he escapes, and however you want to see it, either he escapes by just killing these guards in like five seconds, which seemed too easy, or you have his version, which he wanted you to see, when he has some motherfucker rape a woman with his buddy in Michael Myers' cell, touching his shit, make him smell his fingers, and this is a seven-foot-tall motherfucker. Now, that's another thing that bugs me. You have this dead fuck, fuck, whatever. How the fuck am I supposed to believe that this guy goes from that to a seven foot tall motherfucker. <clears throat> and then what scenes do we get to witness? We get to witness Kid Frey taking the shit and getting killed in the shitter. Just so Rob Zombie can explain how he got his overalls. How he got this. How did he get this, George? He killed Ken Foray while on the shit. Taking the shit. That's what this movie symbolizes. Shit. It's shit. It's shit. It's fucking shit. <clears throat> and Laurie Strode, Scott Taylor, straight out of Compton, is fucking shitty. She does dial like talking with her mom, D. Wallace. Oh, yo, know, that teacher, I heard he was a pervert. Oh, do you want a screwdriver? Huh? Are you hammering? Ooh, ooh. I'm like, what the fuck? Who the fuck talks to the mom like this? I don't give a fuck if that's how kids talk nowadays. Then I don't want to talk to them. I've talked to a lot of people here on YouTube. I don't see fucking... <laughs> These fucking bitches. And again, the dialogue, like... In one sentence, one is like, oh, this dried up bitch, she's a C-U-N-T. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? I hope the God people don't talk like this. If they do, they need to be hit in the face. God, who, I don't care how pretty they are. 
Why the fuck do you want to date someone who's this fucking annoying? And I know you have Daniel Harris and you have Brad Dourif. And here's my thing. You want to make this movie? You want to do Halloween today? After seeing this film, this is the only way I would see it. You tell it from the perspective of Brad Dourif as the sheriff and his daughter, played by Danielle Harris. You do it from their perspective. Star Brad Dourif and Danielle Harris. That's the same characters, but them starring in it. Look at Halloween from their point of view. I want to see Brad Dourif's character. I want to see his day the day as a sheriff, getting the call from the Michael Myers house, meeting Loomis, have someone else play Loomis in a better fucking fashion. Who? I don't know, man. I don't know, fucking Stephen Mott, Fred Ward, someone like that, someone who has a presence to him and has a certain seriousness, but isn't fucking trying to be Shakespeare in his dialogue. Stephen Mott, Fred Ward, something like that is Loomis. I could buy an older guy like that as Loomis. Fred Ward. I would like to see Fred Ward play that kind of role. I think you could pull it off. I really do. If you have Major Lewis, I have fucking Fred Ward. And meet up with them. And you think Lori Strode, but she gets killed. And it's the sheriff and Daniel Harris having to try to figure this out. And figure out what to do. And... and You know, whether Loomis gets killed or not, that's up to you. But how would be Brad Dourif shoot Michael Myers? And, you know, Daniel Harris is about to be killed. She's fighting now. Brad Dourif was the best part of these newer Halloween films. I'm sorry. The best part. I share Brad Dourif. I want to see him in the lead. I honestly I wish to God. I wish, I wish that was the case. Brad Dourif was the most interesting part of these fucking movies. Lois Strode couldn't give a fuck about her. She was a fucking annoying bitch. Loomis was a pretentious bitch. And then basically people get killed. D. Wallstone gets killed and the other guy gets killed. Uh, her friend gets killed. And pretty much a remake now. Like the same way where her, the one girl's boyfriend gets stabbed and hung there, and she gets choked out, and you have the fucking same fucking overall with the glasses. Beat for beat. Her baby's in the kids, Lori Strode. And then the same thing, only Michael Myers grabs her, tapes her, for some reason puts her there and sits there. I don't know what the fuck he's going to do. So, of course, she stabs him. She runs, falls in the fucking pool. This is how, quote, the realism takes in, where Michael Myers gets shot like five, six times, and yet still walking, grabs, we think kills fucking Martin McDowell, but he's still there. You actually see that he's still breathing. He grabs onto Michael Myers' leg. Then gets to a point where cat and mouse and too much shaky cam, so I don't know what the fuck's going on. Then they both push out the window, and she shoots him point-blank range. So you can't fucking tell me he would survive in your, quote, realistic way, Rob. Robbie. Z. As in Z. As in fall the fuck asleep. I know this went to 30 minutes. I didn't want to do that, but... I think that's better because I think last time I reviewed this on my old account it was like an hour or something. But Rob Zombie's Halloween in any version fucking sucks ass. The cast sucks except Brad Dourif. Maybe Daniel Harris but she's not given a lot to do except be a slut. And you see her titties which is nice. But 
the plot okay either it's the same as the first film and the differences they do are stupid and pointless and lame they completely defeat the purpose of what a Halloween film what made Rob Zombie doesn't know what made Halloween films good is that the shape is the shape you don't need an explanation on the fucking shape you don't need to know about the wonder years of Michael Myers great so that all we can see him is this little fucking blonde haired motherfucker trying to go out for an 80's band cheap trick or fucking Motley Crue or some shit even wears a kiss oh he wears a Tish t-shirt. Maybe that's why he killed people. With his white trash family. Saying, you know, everybody cussing like a motherfucker. Just, there's nothing good about this movie. You've seen this movie done before. In Halloween. Or Halloween 4. Just go back and watch Halloween 4. That film feels... Tons more like an actual Halloween movie. No, this is like, we're going to do the grunge, shaky cam, explain everything Wonder Year style. It just, okay, I'm going to end it right now. Why do I not like this film at all? It was a remake that didn't need to be done, granted. People are like, what should you have done? Leave it alone. Just don't do anything. Nothing. Nothing. Or like I said, fine, mate. But have Brad Dourif to share a bracket. Have him be the lead. The lead. Through his eyes. Have this night through a cop's eyes. A sheriff's eyes. From beginning to end. He's on the call. He's doing his job. And then there's some... Oh my God, what the hell is it? Michael Myers? Have it through his eyes. I want to stick the whole movie on Sheriff Brackett. Brad Dourif. You have to cast Brad Dourif though. That's how it would work. His character throughout the whole fucking movie from beginning to end. That's how it would work. It would still be different, but I'm with someone I like. Michael McDowell, why should I like this guy? He shoves every line like he's doing a fucking Shakespearean play. Donald Pleasant did not do that. Donald Pleasant made you believe what he was saying. Michael McDowell doesn't. Nobody else is likable. Lois Joe is not likable. She's just a fucking whiny bitch. <sighs> I broke a nail. Dead weight. The whole the whole fucking first 30 minutes were boring because, oh, this is why Michael Myers was a killer. I don't care. You don't need to know. I'll say it the last time. You don't need a Wonder Years version of Michael Myers. It's not interesting. What made it interesting is the mystique, the entry, the mystery. Instead, we have this typical cliche-ridden reason. With every cliche in the book, he kills animals, uh, he got picked on at school, he abusive family, white trash. Every cliche in the book. The only cliche they didn't do was he wore women's clothes. Because they'd be stealing from Psycho. That was the only cliche they didn't do. Stupid choices. Like the nurse turning all the fucking way around and giving him a fucking metal fork. I don't care what timeline you are. You don't give a kid who killed three, four people a metal fucking fork and then turn all the way around. Reading a fucking magazine. That is stupidity. Ken Foray getting killed in the shit house. Great. Getting killed on the toilet. Great. Dialogue. The literally the little kids in South Park must have written the script. Was it Cardman or was it Eric? It's probably Cardman. Little fat fuck. And it's just it's boring. It's mediocre. It's something that you literally would have seen Lionsgate release direct to DVD. Only thing is, if it didn't, if it did not have Michael Myers, this would have been released direct to DVD by Lionsgate. I know I'm holding this, but you know that too, because that pissed me off more.
But this. I mean, it's the same fucking universe, I guess. It would have been direct DVD. Michael Myers killing people in shaky cam. You can't understand what the fuck's going on. I want to see, if I want to see Michael Myers killing people in interesting ways, the fuck, man? This is the movie. Watch this movie. It's basically the same. But watch as a standalone. With an ending that they should have went with. For being just standalone. Don't even clue five and six. He's killing people by put, put, with a fucking shotgun. And ripping throats out. But anyway, Rob Zombie's Halloween sucks ass. I should not hear fucking love hurts. No likable characters except Sheriff Brackett, Brad Dourif. It got boring. It got shaky cam. The prequel bit was pointless. It defeats the purpose of what a Halloween film should be. Halloween and Friday the 13th are not the fucking same, folks. I know Halloween 4 was like that, but Halloween 1 and 2... Okay, grand. Halloween 2 got influenced by Friday the 13th, but... Michael Myers is not Jason Voorhees. He kind of became that, but there is a difference. You know, he is the shape. He is not the shape in this movie. He's the shit face. He's the shitter. Shitter. I'm, I'm just, I can't go on anymore. I, I'm stopping. I hate this fucking movie. Fuck this movie. And he kiss my ass and can suck my dick. I hate this fucking movie with a passion. I hate this fucking movie. I think it's one of the worst fucking remakes of all time because it should not have Halloween, but this is worse. I'll get to why. So I'll see you soon. Later. Fuck you, Rob Zombie.